Hello, hello, greetings, and welcome back to the Biosampler Summary. I'm John with the Lynch Lab at Duke University, and in this segment we are going to be covering the first part of the assembly, the upper section, the Cartesian system, and the sample block here. So if you have not seen the first segment, the introduction and overview, I might recommend that you take a look at that before continuing. To get started here, we're going to look at the materials necessary to build it, and then we're going to put it together. I am excited, I hope you are excited. So to start with the frame here, we have some 2020 aluminum extrusion. So that's 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter. It has the special V slot. And we have two pieces for the legs that are 290 millimeters. There's one piece for the X axis here that's 175 millimeters. And then two more for the feet down here that connect to the base that are 105 millimeters. Next, we have a lead screw that is 170 millimeters. So with the aluminum extrusion, you can cut this with a hacksaw and j just shave off the sharp edges with a file. With the lead screw, it is stainless steel, so you are going to need a power saw with a metal cutting blade. This one was a little bit more difficult, so definitely be safe when you're doing that. To go along with that, we have a coupling nut to couple that lead screw to a stepper motor. There is a nut to connect the lead screw to the X gantry up here. We have the lead screw pillow and pillow bracket. So those are on this side over here that support one end of the lead screw away from the stepper motor. Next, we have two wheels for the X gantry. We have the upper brackets up here. We have the lower brackets that are going to connect the legs to the base, to the feet. We have the radiator bracket here that's going to go at the base to hold the radiator and the base together. We have two stepper motor brackets. So one stepper motor bracket is going to go on the side here for the X axis stepper motor. And the second one is the X gantry that's going to move along the X axis and hold the Y axis stepper motor. The second part of the X gantry goes along with this. Those are going to mount together and that is going to mount right to the X axis. Next, we have two switch brackets. So the X switch bracket will mount right on the left side here with the X end stop switch. And the Y end stop switch bracket will mount right to the X gantry here with another end stop switch for the needle. For electronics, we've got two of the end stop switches. I've got the wires plugged right in. And I have labeled both sides of the wires Y switch and X switch to keep them separate. That'll help when we're assembling things later and plugging everything into the base. I've got two stepper motors here, also wires plugged in and labeled on both sides, Y step and X step. The Y step motor is going to have this needle holder attached to it that just plugs right on. Next for the sample block, we have our Noctua U9S radiator. The fan and radiator come together. This is a 92 millimeter fan, and it'll, it's going to fit right in our radiator bracket there. The sample block box here is, when you 3D print it, it's going to be an open, hollow, framed box. And I have already gone ahead and used some spray foam insulation to spray that right in there. Just a note on that, when you spray the spray foam in, you want to only fill the walls about 50% because it is going to expand. If you use too much, you could crack the inner wall. And it also is very sticky and makes a big mess. So just be safe with that. Next, we have our aluminum box. So this is 38 millimeters, 38.5 millimeters by 92.5 millimeters. And it's going to fit right in the hollow walled sample block box there. We have the lid of our sample block. So this has holes for 10 different tubes. And it's going to go right on top. We have the cooling unit, the Peltier. This is a thermoelectric cooler unit. And 
the basics of this. One side, the side with the lettering, is the cold side, and the other side is going to get hot when you run a, when you run a current through it. One side gets hot, one side gets cold, and as much as we can keep that temperature differential close to zero, the more cooling we can get on the cold side. So we're going to put that right on top of the radiator and then try to suck the heat away from it, cool it, and that's going to keep the cold side cooling. To go along with that, we have some thermal paste and a spatula to spread that around on the Peltier and the radiator. That comes with the radiator, so you don't have to buy that separate. We've got a couple extra wires here that once we put this together, we are going to extend the wires of our Peltier. We have a fluid sensor here, one of our two. So this is an OPB350 fluid sensor. They're pretty cheap. That's going to go right up on the X gantry up here when we're all finished. And then last but not least, we have a fan cover that goes right in front just to keep you from putting your fingers in that fan. So all of these pieces are 3D printed. I have already removed the support material, which is the surface. If there's an overhanging edge, something prints like this, it prints a low density material underneath so that it has a surface to print on top of. You then do need to remove that material. And just a note on that, when you're removing it, just be careful. There's sharp edges. You need to break it away. So be kind of careful. Next, just a couple notes on 3D printing if you are new to that. We're going to be using Ultimaker Cura is a slicing software and you can download that for free from ultimaker.com. Just Google that. Once you are in Cura, you're going to set it up with your printer. I use both a Creality Ender 3 Pro and an Ultimaker 3. Um, the Ultimaker 3 is a little bit more expensive, but it is really nice with the solu soluble support. You can print much better detail if you have the money for that. It's about 3,500 to 4,000 plus materials. The Ender 3 goes for about 240 on Amazon. It's pretty cheap, maybe a little bit more, 240 to 280, but I've been getting some pretty good results with that. So once you have your STL file, loaded which I have provided you're going to need your slice settings here so I just wanted to go through those quickly so the big ones I use a 0.2 millimeter layer height everything else should be set up pretty standard for you the infill density is important you can change that 20% um, is a base standard that if it's just a test part you can use 20% infill. I print most of my actual functional parts in 50% it's strong enough and if you want something really strong 100% infill density there. Printing temperature is going to be specific to your material so PLA prints between 200 and 230. A couple of them I do use 200 with the one I'm using currently I slice it to 10, and that makes it print a little bit better, adhere to the bed a little bit better. The build plate temperature, I generally use 60, makes it stick really well. If you can't get your prints off the bed, you can take a little water, put that right on the glass print bed, and use your finger to just spread it around the edges, and the, it will, the water will kind of suck the printed part off the plate. Then print speed, I generally print at 50 millimeters per second with the Ender 3. For the Ultimaker, I print at 70 millimeters per second. And now I like to have high resolution and um, good accuracy, which is why I use a low print speed here. I have printed as high as 120 millimeters a second on the Ender 3. And you do get decent parts. Sometimes just the corners don't come out perfectly and things like that. But you can up this a little bit if you want to. Then for support, I do use support everywhere with an overhang angle of 47. These should be pretty standard in here and I do print with a brim just to help that plate adherence but you don't necessarily need that. The other thing I just wanted to show you in here is so for some of the pieces of our um, circuit housing the box below the auto sampler 
we're going to be putting heat set inserts in these locations where there's holes and so for this I'm going to slice this with a couple different densities and the way to do that we're going to go to the marketplace here and go to custom supports you want to install this custom supports package and then once you have that you're going to come over to support blocker click that and you, you can click on the model here to insert some of these blocks and then once you have those on there you do want one for each location but I'll just show you a few here you can if you want to you can go to scale and you can resize these blocks the block we're going to move right over the inset location like this and once that is covering the whole inset again you're gonna do this for each location but once that is covering you're going to go to per model settings here and then modify settings for overlap with other models select settings and when you come down to infill density it will give you here an option to choose the infill density just for the section that that block is overlapping your model and again you're going to do that for each block individually infill density 100 so if you don't want to deal with that you can just slice the whole thing in a hundred percent I think this one takes slicing at 50 percent here with 0.2 millimeter layer height it's about 14 hours if you change that infill density to a hundred percent it's going to take you it's going to take you just over 19 hours so if you've got that ever extra f five hours you don't mind spending printing this part then don't worry about these slice settings but they will save you a little time when you're printing Awesome, so we're gonna get started putting this together. I'm gonna assemble some pieces and then I will walk you through how I put those together. All right, so I've put some stuff together here. Let me walk you through what I have done. So we've got our two legs, the 290 millimeter aluminum extrusion pieces. I've attached our upper brackets. These use eight millimeter M5 screws with the V-slot nuts. There's going to be five on the inside of this one that's going to go on the left side and hold the stepper, x-axis stepper bracket. And then on this one, there's four on the inside. Notice on the one with the x stepper bracket, there's two open holes on the back that we're going to attach that bracket to. The radiator bracket, I've used six eight millimeter M5 screws and V-slot nuts to attach the uh, feet sections to that radiator bracket. We're gonna come back for that one. The x-axis stepper bracket, I've got our lead screw attached to the coupling nut, attached to the x-axis stepper motor. Now with the bracket, if you're looking at it this way, so the motor is in front, in front and the attachment bracket piece is in the back, the wires are gonna come out the back towards me. With the lead screw, it does have one sharp end where I cut it, so I've hid that in the coupling nut. And just a comment on screws here, there's four six millimeter pan head screws. So pan head screws are kind of important here because they do need to sit below the surface of this bracket so that they can hide in there. So six millimeter pan head screws for that one. With the y-axis switch here i've used two m3 20 millimeter screws with two m3 nuts to attach the y switch to that y switch bracket now the orientation of that if you're looking at it this way the circuit board goes towards the screw heads and the wider section of the end stop switch is going to be on the outside and the red actual bumper switch is on the inside closer to the bracket. The X or sorry the Y stepper motor I still have separate. The X switch bracket I have also attached to the Y switch. 
With this one, again, the orientation, if you're looking at it this way, so on your left is the vertical piece, the screws go on the inside and the circuit board on the top. The wider section of the bumper is on the outside and the red section is on the inside here. For the X gantry, this one's a little bit more complicated. I've connected together the two pieces of that, the upper section and the lower section. I've used two M5 40 millimeter screws. You could get away with 35, but uh, 30 is actually too short. So I used M5 40 millimeter screws. These are socket cap head screws. There's M5 nuts on the back, the two 20 millimeter wheels, and these are spaced with seven millimeter printed spacers. I forgot to mention that up front. So again, there's M5 screws, the wheels, the spacers, connecting those pieces together. For the lead screw nut here, I've used three 16 millimeter M5, excuse me, three 16 millimeter M3 screws, along with three M M3 nuts. And there's a fourth hole, you don't really need it, but when you are putting the nut into the socket, it inserts from this direction so that the circular section is on the inside here. The pillow, I have just put in the pillow bracket. And again, if you're looking at it this way so that the extra plastic here is on the top, I only use the bottom screw hole. So the there is a 12 millimeter M5 screw with the M5 nut on the bottom there. For the sample block, I've attached the radiator and fan to the Peltier, to the box, and the aluminum block is in there. I extended these wires and put some shrink, heat shrink tubing over the connection points so that we don't short circuit anything. I've tinned up the ends. Just a couple comments on this. So the Peltier we're using is a Peltier thermoelectric cooler 12706. That 12706 is going to be important because the six refers to six amps that it's using. I initially started with a 12710 using 10 amps and it basically drew twice the current and twice the power consumption. It heated up twice as much. It cooled down the sample block twice as fast, but in general, we decided you really don't need it. It's going to be too much power consumption, so you really do want to use that 12706. For the thermal paste, the way I applied that is I applied it to the bottom side of the Peltier first and then squished that around on the surface of the radiator. Then I applied some thermal paste to the top. I used the spatula to spread it out nice and thin. You only need a tiny little bit just to cover the surface imperfections of the Peltier. Then I put the box, the insulated box, on top of that. I used two 12 millimeter M5 screws with M5 nuts to connect through these holes. There's initially some pins in there with screws that I just popped out. So you use those two screws to connect it down. Then the aluminum block goes right on top and just push that right down. Again, one more time, with the Peltier, the numbered side, the lettered and numbered side, needs to go up because that is the cold side when you run current through it the proper direction. So next, I'm going to put a few more of these pieces together and then we'll regroup and walk through that. Awesome, so we are doing great here. In this stage, I've done three things. The first one is I've attached the pillow bracket with the pillow to the left leg. There's two M5 eight millimeter screws holding those together with the V-slot nuts. There's a notch in the pillow bracket, so it'll slide right in with that upper bracket and those will fit together nicely. With the left leg, I've attached the stepper motor bracket to the, that upper bracket. And holding those together, there's two 12 millimeter M5 screws with V-slot nuts. And then there's one eight millimeter screw down here, M5. With the X gantry, I've attached the Y stepper motor and the Y switch bracket here. And to hold those together, if you're looking at it from the front here, the Y switch will stick out this, the, the wiring will stick out towards you this way. And there's three M3 
eight millimeter screws that go through all three of these. So they go through the Y switch bracket, through the gantry and into the Y stepper motor. There's also one six millimeter pan head screw there. For the last step, we're going to put these three sections together and then we're going to attach it to the base. So for that final step there, I assembled the upper section by slotting the X gantry onto the X axis here. So to do that, you're going to slide it right on the X axis. You're going to thread the lead screw into the nut that's on the back of the X gantry. And then you're going to slot the leg with the pillow bracket on the end. So it's gonna fit the lead screw on there. On the back, you are going to use, again, M5 eight millimeter screws to attach those upper brackets to the back. If things don't quite fit just right, immediately when you put it together, you can loosen things up a little bit, slide it around, level out those brackets, and then tighten it back up. Just a note on the front side here. So I have added two extra V-slot nuts on the front of the X-axis. They're gonna slide towards the end with the stepper motor, and that's where we're going to mount our X-switch bracket. But you do need to slot those on before you put on the pillow bracket so that you can get them in there. On the bottom here, I've used the lower brackets, the YZ brackets, again, M5 eight millimeter screws and the V-slot nuts to attach the radiator bracket and the base, the feet there to the legs, both sides. Similar note as well on the inside surface of the leg with the pillow bracket. It's going to also need two V-slot nuts with the eight millimeter screws so that we can mount our pump housing there later. Again, you need to get those V-slot nuts in before you make the final connection with the base so that you can get them in. So just a couple finishing touches with the sample block and the radiator here. I did take off the fan. You can do that by just popping these brackets off the side. And I just rotated it 90 degrees so that I could have the wire down in the bottom corner here. It initially starts up in this corner, but I kind of like it down the bottom so that it can thread along the side there. Put the lid right on top, and this is going to fit right into the radiator bracket. It's a little bit tight. Once that is in there, the fan cover should slot right in front. There's a couple little notches right on the side at the bottom, and those can fit right in there. Perfect. The OPB350 fluid sensor, we're going to slot right in the top of the X gantry here, and then two 12 millimeter M3 screws and M3 nuts to hold that in place. And then lastly, the X switch bracket there, right in the front. Again, again, eight foot, M5 eight millimeter screws. And that switch bracket should go as far as close to the stepper motor as possible. So great, there you have it. We've got our sample block all set to go with the radiator, the Cartesian system. We're just gonna put our blunt 18 gauge needle with the lure lock and that needle holder. It's basically good to go. In the next section, we're going to be covering the circuitry and the base housing down here. I hope you enjoyed this segment and I hope you continue to follow along. Thanks. Hey again. I just wanted to take a quick second here to acknowledge the support we received for this project from DMC Biotechnologies, as well as the guidance from Dr. Michael Lynch. Thanks for helping make it happen.